Dracula's Daughter, an underrated film with bite. Whether you're a whore fan or run at the first sound of a creaking door, one thing you can't escape is the ever-present joke about the umpteenth sequel to a horror movie being relative of insert antagonist here. The titular relative is often a bride or a son. The Universal Monsters had their fair share. The Frankenstein series had both a bride of the Frankenstein monster and a son of Dr. Frankenstein. Count Dracula had a son, who was implied to actually be the Count himself, and a daughter. And Dracula's Daughter, from 1936, a direct sequel to Dracula 1931, subverts the Family Tree sequel title grammatical conventions just as its star subverts monster movie conventions. Given how many subpar horror sequels exist, it would be easy to watch the classic first and skip the rest, but you'll be missing hidden gems. It's a shame that, like the Bride of Frankenstein, Countess Maria Zaleska, played by Gloria Holden, never got a sequel of her own, and never got to join in on the many crossovers with other universal monsters. But unlike The Bride of Frankenstein, the character of Dracula's daughter also isn't referenced, parodied, or paid tribute to nearly as often. Also, unlike The Bride of Frankenstein, Countess Zaleska is not only an active character throughout her film, but also the star. We start the film immediately after Dracula's ending. Jonathan and Mina have already left Dracula's castle toward the sunrise of another day, but Professor Van Helsing, played by Edward Van Sloan, renamed in this film as Von Helsing, sticks around, is caught by the police, and is arrested for murder. Police don't believe in vampires, after all. Like many films of the era, Dracula's daughter's running time is quite short, leaving little time for subplots or backstory. Instead, we get hints of things that may have happened, things that may be happening, and things that could happen. One example of the latter is that, after von Helsing's arrest, he's mostly confined, pun intended, to discussing his defense with his former student, Dr. Jeffrey Garth, played by Otto Kruger. Von Helsing gets some wonderful dialogue, and is clearly on board to fight the spread of Dracula's vampirism. Speaking of, meanwhile, we meet Countess Zaleska, determined to destroy her father's legacy and hoping to purge herself of vampirism and live life as a human. She steals Dracula's body from where the police are keeping it and decides to fight fire with fire. She seeks help from a psychiatrist, Dr. Garth in fact, to see if she can rid herself of her vampirism once and for all. This begins an interesting story exploring the power of the mind. Some of the psychiatric ideas presented are very much outdated, but they do work for the film and the story being told. In modern vampire media, it's common to find vampires who don't want to be vampires, or at least don't want to hurt anyone, and fight their eternal thirst with every passing mortal neck. This is one of the earliest film examples I've seen of this journey. Gloria Holden gives a great performance as Countess Zaleska. We don't get to see her transform into other forms or even show fangs. Thus, the film relies heavily on Holden's performance. Her face shows us what we need to know about every scene she's in. We see her unbreakable, intense gaze as she hypnotizes people. We see the struggle on her face as she fights her vampirism and its impulses. We see her intense desperation for joy, unsure if she can let her guard down. We see her desperate when it's all too much to fight, and her calm when she gives in to her thirst. The unrelenting intensity of Holden's performance gets a hold on, pun intended, your attention and never lets go. The scene in which Countess Zaleska plays piano while talking to Sandor, played by Irving Pichel, doesn't even show her hands playing the piano. The focus is on their faces, their performances, and the music as it gradually changes. The scene with Countess Aleska and Lily, played by Nan Gray, doesn't involve any transformations, bat or otherwise. 
absent mere reflections or any other tricks or effects beside a shining light, but Holden's performance makes it gripping, tense, and even chilling to watch. Although the short running time doesn't allow much in the way of subplots or backstory, Zaleska is a fascinating enough character that the film leaves you wondering what else there is to her story. Lines about her mother singing her a song when she was a child bring up questions of if she was always a family member or, if not, how she became Dracula's daughter, some of which possible backstories may have been too dark for a 1930s movie. Could she have overcome her vampirism through the power of her own mind, through another ritual like the one she conducted with her father's body, or some combination of the two? Was Sandor correct in his constant reminders that she could never be free of vampirism? Or was he manipulating her so she'd stay a vampire and turn him into one, as he says she promised him? The climax is also unconventional in several ways. The role Sandor takes brings another dimension to his character that assistants or other supporting characters don't generally get. In some ways, the climactic scene with Countess Zaleska, Dr. Garth, and Janet Blake, Blake played by Marguerite Churchill, plays like a typical vampire movie climax, but the fact that the vampire is a woman makes it unique for the time in that woman has agency and even power in the proceedings. Holden's performance also gives the proceedings an undeniable subtext that is just barely subtext. Dracula's daughter is rife with so much potential, and it's so easy to see what could have been in any sequels or crossovers involving her father's return, further adventures with Van or Von Helsing, and so much more. However, all of this is true for many films of the era. Ultimately, what Dracula's daughter does give us is strong. The fact that what could have been is so clear proves just how strong it is. Amongst all the brides of and sons of, Dracula's daughter deserves to stand next to them in the classic monster lineup, and her own spot in your spooky movie lineup.